Aside from both being fully aquatic, what do sirenians and whales and dolphins have in common? If you said very little or nothing at all, then you'd actually be pretty close, as both organisms are extremely distantly related. However, aside from just being aquatic, both animals have at least one thing in common, their origins. In January of 2013, paleontologists discovered the very first unambiguously preserved sirenian to appear in the entire fossil record with the remains in question being of a petrosal, a part of the nervous system. Unfortunately, a paper describing these bones and assigning them a genus or even a species has yet to be published. But we do know that the fossil dates to 50 million years ago in what is today Tunisia, showing that Cyrenians likely originated in North Africa. During the Eocene epoch 50 million years ago at this time, Africa had yet to connect to Eurasia, and North Africa would have been a warm tropical place, covered in vastly more rainforests than desert. However, the very first described Cyrenian family and genre appear 49 million years ago in Jamaica. Prorostomidae was the very first family of Cyrenians to appear in the fossil record, endemic to the Caribbean island of what is today Jamaica, appearing in the Eocene. Pizocyrum portali was the first genus and species to appear in the family, living from 49 to 46 million years ago. Pizocyrum was a very skinny animal, at least compared to modern-day Cyrenians, being comparable in size to a pig around 2 metres long. Pizocyrum was likely not fully terrestrial, given its pretty short stature, and the fact that its remains have been found in marine deposits. However, it also wasn't as specialised for a marine environment as its later descendants, given its lack of a tail fluke or pan, and its limbs were more suited for a terrestrial locomotion style. Although not even closely related, Pisa siren seems to have a lot of similarities with the genus Pachycetus from Pakistan, which was a semi-aquatic whale ancestor, which shows a pretty nice transition from terrestrial to semi-aquatic to eventually aquatic. Prorostoma sirenoides was the next genus and species to appear in the fossil record, living in Jamaica 40 million years ago. Prorostoma had a more barrel-shaped body, a more sirenian-like snout, and shorter limbs than that of Pisa siren, likely showing somewhat of a transition. P. sirenoides had a developed nasal ridge, implying a keen sense of smell along with crown-shaped molars indicating a diet of aquatic, soft vegetation. Once evolving adaptations for an aquatic lifestyle, Cyrenians saw their very first adaptive radiation about 46 million years ago in the mid-Eocene epoch. A likely descendant of Pisa siren was the genus Protosiren, which lived from 46 to 37 million years ago in the mid-Eocene epoch. Although still retaining all four limbs, Protosiren's head and body seem to have merged together, eliminating the neck of the animal, and its tail had seemingly become more disc-shaped, allowing for better underwater propulsion. Protosiren also had a pretty wide range, from Florida, South and North Carolina, Egypt, France, Germany, Hungary, India and Pakistan, implying that it was almost fully aquatic. The first subfamily of Cyrenians I could find online to appear in the fossil record was Halotherinae, which I discussed in my video on dugongs. Eotheroides was the very first Cyrenian to be fully suited to an aquatic mode of life, having completely lost its two back limbs. Because so many earlier genera of Cyrenians are so incomplete in the fossil record, their early evolution remains somewhat mysterious and very little seems to actually be concrete. The evolution of Cyrenians seems to be a parallel to that of cetaceans. The evolution of Cyrenians seems to be a parallel to... Both clades of animals were once fully terrestrial, and through natural selection they gained more and more adaptations for an aquatic lifestyle. I'm sorry for the pretty wonky editing and short runtime of this particular episode, but next episode will probably be longer. Next episode, I'll be covering the completely extinct order known as Embrithopoda, and no, it won't be cut into two parts.
the entire clade will be discussed in one video. Anyway, I hope you like this one. Bye.